Hi, I'm Dr. Padilla. Today we're talking about using color for our data visualizations in ggplot using R. Color can have a huge difference in terms of the look and feel of your visualization. For example, we can change the color in the scene. As you can see, we've completely changed the look and feel of this scene, and we can do the same thing with data visualizations. In this video, we're going to talk specifically about selecting colors or categorical variables in ggplot. So let's jump right in. All right, to get started, what we're going to want to do is make sure that we have this ggplot2 library loaded, and we're going to load a second library for color brewer color palettes and this is with a package called r color brewer so be sure to install that and go ahead and load it into your uh, area and then what we're going to do is use a fictional data set that we've used in quite a few of these examples now i'll link the code in the description so you can just go ahead and run that and it creates a data set that looks a little bit like this where we have a column that has different groups, A and B, and then we have some values, just some randomly created values in two of these columns here. So we have value one, value two. So what we're going to do today is to change these colors and um, think about what types of colors would be best for representing this data. And so we can visualize this data with a pretty simple plot. What we're going to plot is essentially geom point. So we're going to give a point for each dot, and we're going to use geom smooth to make a regression line for each of the groups. And we've done this in previous tutorials that I'll, I'll link here. So essentially we have two groups, A and B, and here there is the data for value one and value two, and then a regression line. So these particular colors that are default in R, this pink and teal, are going to be just the standard ones that you get. And they're actually pretty good. There has been some work to ensure that they are a decent default. But if you want to change them, do something more interesting, that's what we're going to talk about today. So how do you do that? How do you select different colors? Now, you not, might not be an artist. You might not have any aesthetic, you know, inklings. But there are some rules and guidelines that you can use to ensure that you're using effective color. And I'll talk in more depth about theories of color in more advanced videos. But this is really just a quick and dirty rule of thumb that will make sure that you never go wrong with color. So what I'm going to show you is an application called Color Brewer. And this website is colorbrewer2.org. And it takes you to a page that shows you many different color scales. And I'll walk you through what each of these are. So we have three primary types of data. We have sequential, and this is when your data is meaningfully ordered in some way. And if we tap through these, you can see what it will look like with the different color scales, which is pretty cool. And we can change the number of classes. Maybe you have six and you need color scales for all of those, which is uh, really, really useful. Now, the amazing part about Color Brewer is that it is based on empirical research. There are several studies where they went through and they showed participants a wide range of color scales and had them both discern values on the color scale and rate them for their aesthetic value. So the ones you're seeing here are really foolproof. If you select any of these, you're going to ensure that people can effectively see this information and that it is aesthetically pleasing to a wide variety of people. Um, so we have this sequential version here. We also have diverging. This is when you have data that you want to show kind of in contrast to one another. Maybe it's from one spectrum to another, or you want to show, um, you know, male to female or this to that. That's kind of this um, diverging color scales that you can take a look at here. And the third option is qualitative. Now this is when there's not kind of two ends of a spectrum. It's when every piece or every uh, grouping factor is unique. And you want people to be able to discriminate between each of these groups as much as possible. So there's no inherent relationship between these groups. They're just completely independent of one another. And so there's quite a few color scales here. Now, the other thing I want to point out is when we're going through these, there are some that are specifically designed to be color blind safe. If I select this, notice all of the color scales go away because we have so many of these data classes selected. If I go down to four, there are some options for four, this one um, kind of uh, blue, green, pink option here. If you go to diverging, there's certainly quite a few more. 
uh, if we have four and sequential, almost all of them are good for people that have colorblind deficiency. And I would say a large portion of the public does have colorblind issues. So you do want to ensure that your colors are colorblind safe. Now in R, we loaded a package that gives you all of these color scales, which is great. But if you don't have that package and you want to specify the color manually, here are all the colors. And what these numbers are, are a hexadecimal code, which is a um, character numeric way of identifying very specific colors. We can change it to different ways of specifying the colors here. This is RGB, red, green, blue, and this is CMYK, which is a, a printing specification. I tend to like this hexadecimal code because it seems to involve the fewest numbers that I have to type. But these would be essentially how you would specify any color um, at all, but specifically it'll give you the colors for each of these scales. Okay, so if you focus on using these empirically validated color scales, you will be fine in terms of selecting the scale for your data. But how do we actually do that in R? Okay, so there are a few methods for doing that. Because we loaded the Color Brewer library, there's a specific function that we can use to load those Color Brewer scales or utilize them. The first way you can do it is with a function called scale color brewer. We're using color brewer color scale, so this makes sense. And you can specify which palette that you want to use if you know the name of them. So if I run this bit of code, now you'll see that I have this green purple palette going on here. Now, how would you figure out what the different names are? I have this specified up here. We can go ahead and run a simple line of code that is a function called display.brewer.all. And what it does is it prints out all of the different, um, so here are the different um, naming conventions for the color brewer color scales. I selected this accent one here, which I think is pretty nice, but you can change the name in that function to any of these names and utilize the particular color scale that you see here, which is pretty cool. Okay, so where you'd specify that is here. You would change it from accent to dark two is another pretty good one. It would look like this. Pretty easy, right? So right out of the gate, we are immediately taking what is the default color scale, which is the pink kind of green thing, and we are updating it to an empirically validated version, like dark two. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Another way to specify a color scale is to specify the values manually. Another way to do the exact same thing is with a function called scale color manual, and you can specify the hexadecimal code for the exact colors that you want. So for this one, I've selected this kind of purpley color and a teal color, which look pretty good together. Um, so this is really a kind of a simplistic way to do basically what this is. And in theory, you could take the accent color scale and specify the exact colors from that accent scale if you wanted to do it without specifying this color uh, scale color brewer function. Okay, so this is looking pretty good to me, but it's hard to see the trends as much as I would like it to be um, visible. And ultimately what we're doing with color is we're trying to make the important relationships in the data very obvious. So we want to make sure that our color is really working to do that. And I think there's more that we can do. Specifically, there seems to just be kind of um, a lot of kind of overlap or muddledness between all of these overlapping grays. So I'm going to go ahead and add a theme, this theme black and white, and we talked about themes in this video that I'll link. And what that's gonna do is it's taking away our white background. So this looks a little better. I'm starting to be able to focus more on the primary trends in the data. The next thing I wanna uh, think about is these bars. So these bars are both gray and it can be a little bit confusing what's going on here. So what I would like to do is I would like to color code the bars to match the lines and the dots. And what I have going on here is the grouping or the way that, that these are actually being colored at all is because I specify the color as pertaining to the group. And then when I specify a color scale, it will color code it accordingly. Now there's another way that you can add color to your visualization and it is with fill. So if I add fill 
also equals group and uh, run this code. We start to notice some additional colors happening here. Now, what's going on is that color is reserved for color coding, usually the stroke or the border of information. A line itself is the stroke, so it color codes the lines fine. And for dots, it's actually going to fill in the entire dot. But for anything else like these bar, like these uh, kind of this area here, or if you have bars, in order to color those, you would indicate a uh, fill that you want to fill the different groups based on whatever variable you have here. And what is going on in this particular visualization now is we have two different color scales going on. We have the default color scale, which is this teal and pink. And then we have the one that we specified, which is the green and purple. So they're kind of mixed up together. Now, in order to specify that you want the fill to be colored as you would like, what you would do is rather than saying scale color, you would say scale fill manual and we get this. So essentially we're saying we both want the color, which is mostly the outline, the stroke and the fill to be the ones that we specify here. And you get the, this visualization like this. And you can do the same thing for the color brewer version. Basically, if you wanted to do this with the color brewer functions, Right now we have color, which is good. And we also want to add a fill. So we would do scale fill brewer. And it would look like this. So pretty straightforward, but people tend to get confused between this color and fill because you have two options and you have to specify which one you're you're working with today we talked about several ways to specify color in ggplot with categorical data now there's so much more to talk about in terms of color but if you want a foolproof method for identifying which color scales are the best focus on using empirically validated color scales like color brewer if you want to learn more about selecting color scales for continuous data check out this video and I will see you next time.